everybody, welcome to the Actors Academy. Thank you for tuning in today. Today, I'm gonna be giving you guys the process that I go through when I am analyzing a script. I make life for myself very, very, very simple and very easy. So how do I make life easy? I know exactly how I go through and how I analyze a script and everything I do in the specific steps. If you can go and get a sequence for yourself, you're gonna make life a lot easier. What I want you to get from this video though, is you do not have to do exactly what I do. You can have your own process, or maybe you can take some of my processes and add it to your own, you enhance it. Whatever it is, I want you guys to realize that you need a process as an actor, depending on what it is that you're doing. For memorization, uh, for working in characters, for getting an audition, you have to have a process. I'm gonna be giving you guys the exact process that I go through. I'm gonna be telling you guys everything that I do. Again, if you choose to use all of it and copy it exactly, great, use it, it's yours. Or if you decide to enhance it for your own purposes, great, do that. I'm gonna be giving you guys the process that I use and hopefully have that help you guys in your own process. So point number one, the very, very, very first thing that I do is I look at the character synopsis. When your agent or your manager gets you the audition, you're gonna have a character synopsis that you can read to see what this character is about. This is from um, the casting directors that you're getting. So you get a clear idea of what they're kind of picturing for this character. The reason that I pay so much attention to the character synopsis is because this is the first thing that the casting director is having us read before we ever go and even look at the scene, which means this is gonna be at the forefront of their mind. So if they're looking for a bad boy type of character, or they're looking for a boy next door, or they're looking for the funny guy, or the best friend, I'm trying to see what details are given within that character synopsis that I can look into and see, okay, I can kind of picture this is the type of bad boy that they want. Because there's different bad boys out there. So there's some bad boys who just love to cause havoc. There's other bad boys who are bad boys based off of circumstances. There are other bad boys who are bad, but love overcomes and that's the thing that pushes them forward. So in short, I really like to pay attention to the character synopsis because this is the first thing that you're reading. It's the first thing that starts painting the picture in my head of what this character looks like and how they act just a little bit but it helps put me into the right ballpark first. Now, the next thing that I will do is I'll go through and read the entire scene that I've been given, and I will be reading this scene multiple times so I can get an idea of who this character is. I start to hear their voice a little bit more as I just keep reading the text. I start to figure out more of the details that are within the scene. But here's the caveat to this. I do not look at any of the action lines, meaning the lines that are saying, hey, what's going on in the scene? If I'm driving a car or if I'm uh, buying an ice cream cone or whatever it is I'm doing in the scene. I do read it, but I read it later on and there's a specific reason for that. I like to focus for myself on my own actor instincts because I really like to focus on my own instincts, what I think of the character, how I feel the scene is moving. And I will only go through this process only reading the character's lines, meaning my character and the other characters that are in the scene. So I'm understanding everything that's going on, but first only by reading what the characters are actually saying. Point number three is to find out all the facts now about the scene. Now, how do I find these facts? I literally find these facts by going through and reading the scene over and over and over again and paying attention to what I'm actually reading. If my character says, hey, I'm gonna be getting home from work at 10 o'clock, I start work at you know nine in the morning, then I know this character is gonna have a long day ahead of them. Do I know how this character feels about their work? Do they love their job? Do they hate their job? I don't know, I have to keep reading the scene to find that out. Maybe my character will say, oh my gosh, I hate this job, I just can't stand it. Great, that paints a picture for me. I know how this character feels about their job, so I know how they may say that line that they're gonna be speaking. Whereas if the character says, oh my gosh, I love this job, I can't wait to get to work, well then that will paint a whole other different story that will make me play the character even differently. So I end up finding out these facts just simply by going through and reading the actual scene. Point number four is to find out your character's wants. What is your character wanting from this scene? What are they wanting in the whole entire piece? If you know what they're wanting in the whole entire piece, that's great. Meaning if your character wants world domination, that will define how you go and play your character compared to if they want world peace. But you have to find out what is your character want? Overall, yes, but also what do they exactly also want within the scene? So you have to be definitive and what your character is actually wanting, what they're chasing for, what they're really trying to achieve. The next point is figuring out why my character is actually saying what they're saying. This is really important for myself, and this is what I do. I go through every single line that I have 
and I will ask myself, why am I saying this sentence? And why do I continue on to saying this sentence and the next sentence? Because the writers, what they're doing is they're giving you the lines of what you're saying. They could have just given you one sentence, but for some reason they decided to give you a whole paragraph and one sentence led on to sentence two, which led on to sentence three and four and five. Something is compelling you to continue on speaking. And you, as an actor, have to find out what that is. A perfect example of knowing why your character is saying what they're saying is with this example right here. Let's say you had to go and break up with your significant other in this scene. And your line was, hey, I need to break up with you. It's just not working out between us. Now, you can play this line a lot of different ways. Let's imagine that you hate this person that you're breaking up with and you finally have the courage to tell this person that you're gonna break up with them. How you say that line is gonna be completely different. If you do not wanna break up with your significant other here, but you know that you are holding them back in life. So the way that you approach the scene, the way that you look at them, the way that their answer in responding to you affects you and what we see in your face and how you respond back verbally, will be different depending on which scenario you are exactly in. Now, the great thing is usually the scene will have all the answers for you as long as you know how to mine the text and you're really reading it and you're analyzing and seeing why is your character saying what they're saying. But sometimes this won't be the case at all and there will be some bad writing that you will come across. Sometimes you will have to make up the reason for yourself. But having a reason is better than not having a reason at all. Of course, you wanna go and see what is the script telling you, of course. But again, if there's no reason at all, it's better to come up with a reason than to have nothing there. Now, the last point, what we're gonna be looking at is the action lines. Now, the reason that we're doing the action lines now is because the action lines can sometimes affect how you perceive your characters. And if I'm an actor wanting to work primarily off of my instincts, I wanna see what's all the information that I'm getting through all these other steps that I was talking about beforehand and seeing how I feel about that character. How do I feel that they act within this world? What do they do? Uh, how do they feel about the person they're speaking with? All of this is completely working off of the facts within the scene and having that build in to my own instincts. All of that is working in tandem. So it's facts leading into my own instincts. Now, sometimes with the action lines is they'll tell you either how to act or what you're doing in the scene, which sometimes just isn't beneficial to you at all as the actor. And sometimes they'll spell things out for you. So I'm gonna be putting up uh, a scene right here that you guys can go and see. This one is from, if you guys have seen The Notebook at all. Now this is all fine and dandy and this gives you some information here, but there's some things that maybe you won't wanna do. So you can't get married to some of these action lines because some of them are just not playable in the audition situation. This is also saying how the character is approaching with the letters in her hand. Well, we do not need this action line if we're actually paying attention to the text. As we can see here, Noah's first line is, huh, I see you got my letters meaning that she already has the letters there for him to say that line. Which means if you're playing the character of Noah, that's important for you to realize that you are noting that Allie has these letters in her hand right now. Then the action line over here says, Allie nods and smiles uncomfortably. Now, if you are playing Allie, yes, you can choose to try and follow this exactly, but your interpretation of Allie may be different than someone else's interpretation and you do not have to follow this by the T, which means sometimes an actress will force this and it'll be a forced nod and it'll be a fake uncomfortable smile, which just won't look natural on, on the screen when people are watching you. It'll look like you're just trying to act out the directions which are on the page. Now, I don't totally discredit going through and looking at the action lines because sometimes they can be very helpful. And I do still have to check out what those action lines actually are because maybe I have an interpretation of the character and what's going on in the scene. And then the action line may tell me, oh no, I'm completely wrong on the idea that I have. And if I'm wrong, that's okay. All I have to do is work and adjust around it. But I've done so much work on my instinct of having the idea of who this character is and what they do and how they see the world that any changes that I have to make at this point is a lot easier for myself. Remember, if you're not gonna be working off of your instincts as much right now because you just haven't worked them out quite a bit or you don't trust your instincts or whatever it is, it's fine if you decide to go and look at these directions earlier on. Or maybe for you, it doesn't matter at all and you just like looking at it at the very beginning. That's fine if that's your process. But this is my process. 
this is what I do, and these are the actual steps that I go and take when I'm working on my auditions and I have that script in hand. So I hope you guys liked this video. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel so you stay up to date with everything. Give this video a thumbs up if it helps you guys. Also, I'll be leaving our 10 hour acting masterclass 2.0 down in the description down below and also in the comment section if you guys are interested in that. It'll take about two minutes or so to sign up as well as our 10 acting resume templates. Also, without further ado, I did say from my last video that I would give you guys 10 one arm push ups uh, if we reached a certain amount of likes within 10 days and we did it. So I'm also gonna be giving you guys my 10 one arm push ups right here. Thank you.